welcome again to Yara Ben Emmett to the Torah Watchman Show, only available on YouTube. Please subscribe, click like, and personal notify. If you don't have a Gmail account, it's free. Yes, it is free. It's very easy to create a Gmail account. Uh, you can add your picture there, personal flavor and all this. I'm not promoting Google or YouTube per se, but it is a medium to get the good word across that God loves you no matter who you are, both Jew and Gentile, right? The Torah Watchman is all about reaching those people that rabbis all too often, I don't know, unintentionally or whatever, through indifference, just does not reach out to. I'm an outreach kind of Orthodox Jew. I'm a Sidic Jew. And today I want to present a very strong, compelling argument of truth. Today, um, we are, are this sunset this evening, we're going to actually celebrate the Independence Day of Israel. Yes, the Independence Day of Israel. Um, this is known as Yom HaAzamol. Ha uh, this means the Independence. In 1948, I don't have to get into a lot of the history about 1948 and the Israel's rebirth and everything. There's tons and tons of informational videos and documentaries and historical things out there. But I want to present something that is not typically discussed about how important for, for 12.5 million Jews to know that they will have a real, legitimate, bona fide homeland apart from where they may dwell in the diaspora and the diaspora. Yes, that is no other than the nation state of Israel, Eretz Israel. Yes. In 1948, a lot of people argue about was that the right time for the uh, Jews to, um, to go back to Zion per se, to do an Aliyah, mass Aliyah, uh, mass uh, migration to Eretz Israel, who scattered out all throughout Europe, mostly Holocaust survivors, yes, they, they came in and populated in 1948 in Israel. Now, I want to point out again, I want to get off topic, there is a dichotomy of truth between ultra-orthodoxy and anti-Zionism, okay? Uh, Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Martin Keith, uh, King Jr., said very well of blessed memory that being a Zionist does not make you a racist, does not make you a bad person. It simply is pride in the homeland. Yes, pride in the homeland. Newsflash, King David of blessed memory was a very proud Zionist of the land. Yes, uh, maybe we all say, oh man. But there are a group, a subgroup, I would say, a sect, a deviant sect of maybe in cultists, even in the Jew um, in Judaism at large. These people are known as the Notare uh, Karta and the uh, Satmar Hasidim. Don't get Satar Has Hasidim uh, confused with Hasidic Jews, Agadov, and um, at large. Please, these are there's only two thousand of these um, Jews in Israel today. There's about maybe 10,000, most of them are in America. But these people have, have for, since the founding of Israel in 1948, they have stood against people like Theodore Herzl, the first, first Zionist around 1937, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm not correct about that date. The, um, the government there was largely secular. The secular is worn out uh, compared to the religious uh, right there in 1948. Uh, to form the nation, the first Knesset in 2,000 years. Of course, you know, some religious Jews said we wanted a Sanhedrin there. Well, uh, the thing is, is that the seculars went over the religious Jews because religious Jews didn't even support the nation of Israel. They didn't think it was time. They believed that Mashiach should come first and supernatural things happen. And then and only then should the Jews return to Israel based on prophetic writings uh, even uh, Rabbi Rashi of the 11th century, one of our sages, well-known um, sage, by the way. So back to the two uh, sects of Jews here. Uh, I had some experience with them. I've been monitoring them for many years. Uh, they're in Israel that cause a lot of problems, okay? They support an organization known as Free Palestine. Uh, they support Peace Now. They support the BDS Boycott 
against Jewish businesses, mom and pop shops, folks, in Judea and Samaria. In the military, there's something known about messaging, okay? Psych ops and all that stuff. What I'm saying here is that if you are using the same messaging as our shared enemies, you are actually in the enemy's camp, okay? So if the fake Palestinians in, Ham in, in Hamas in Gaza, the government over that terrorist enclave there, by their constitution are swearing to the destruction of not only the state of Israel, but the extermination of every Jew and drive them into the Mediterranean Sea. They want a final solution to finish what Hitler uh, did not finish. Remember the six million? Yes, a blessed memory. So they support these radical Islamic uh, terrorists that have, have killed my, my brother, friend and brother, Ari Fulton, who lived in the G G Hills more, more than two years ago, uh, you know, a uh, uh, dual Israeli American citizen. Um, young girls, uh, uh, rabbis have been mutilated, slaughtered, just horrible, horrific things. Uh, leading up to 1948, the Jews were being attacked for just living in Palestine, and it wasn't even uh, their country during that time. You know, 18, 1700, 1800, 1900, the Ottomans there and everything else. Great Britain ended the Ottoman Empire uh, impact in the Middle East. They drove them out. And because of the Holocaust and world sympathy by Gentile powers there, they uh, decided to have a compassionate heart and extend a small strip of desert, essentially desert there, um, in 1948 for the Jewish people to have a homeland because they had no place to go. I mean, their homes were devastated in the uh, years of 1941, 42, 43, and the end of the war of 1944, they completely de decimated their economies, their families, uh, people lost generations of, of people. They had nowhere else to go other than Israel. Now where I'm getting to, the rush, I want to present, to be fair, this issue wants to be fair to present the, both sides of the argument, okay? It's obvious, me as an Orthodox Hasidic Jew, living in an, an air roof in Silver Spring, Maryland, I can say today, happy birthday, Israel. Yes, I can say I celebrate Israel's Independence Day from being reborn like the phoenix from its ashes in 1948. It was nothing short of a miracle. I can say that and still say I'm an Orthodox Hasidic Jew, okay? Why? Because I believe in miracles. Now, the other side, I already mentioned this group, two groups, main groups, uh, Notre Akarta and Satmar Hasidim, these groups here are fractional groups and not considered mainstream by any stretch of imagination. But their rationale is, is that um, based on R Rashi, I think a gross misinterpretation of Rashi from the Midrash, he essentially said that the people were adjured or implored not to return collected to the land of Israel by a, um, a, exertion of physical force, get this, exertion of physical force, nor to rebel against the nations of the world, okay? Nor to hasten to the end. So that interpretation from, from the Midrash is the mission statement of these deviant sects, okay? Of these cultists. They're my Jewish brothers and I love them, but their behavior is abominable, okay? It embarrasses me as a Jew when other people hear anti-Semitic messaging coming from a subset of Jews there that are saying the same things that Islamic terrorists are saying about the Jewish people, not just in Israel, but around the world, okay? But anyway, these people also quote from the Psalms chapter 127 and 1, and quickly essentially says that the Jewish people have been removed from the causal laws that govern nature and history and are exclusively bound by another set of religious ethical laws uh, within a causal process of reward and punishment, exile and redemption. Uh, unless the Lord build the house, you know, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman keeps vigil in vain. What is that saying here? You've heard the saying, if you build it, they'll come. Now, back to the exertion of force argument with Rashi, and about, about what I just said about 
Only the Lord can build the house, and then you will come. And namely, build the house is Judea, Jerusalem, the walls of Judea, uh, of Jerusalem to protect the city, and of course, the temple and everything else, all the religious things there that used to be there, of course, 2,000 years ago in King Herod uh, Great's second temple. But what they're saying is here that only God should place the Jews in the land through supernatural means, okay? But what happened, and my argument against that, is that there is no exertion of force by vulnerable, poor, penniless Jews who had no place to go, who left different places in Europe, went all the way to Israel in 1948, when there was a, a government, a Knesset formed there, a very minimal government, no military force. It took even the United States president a while to recognize them. The, uh, the Prime Minister of, of England, Great Britain, the, the, uh, the uh, British Empire at that time, there was League of Nations at that time too, I think, the, and there's transition into the United Nations. Anyway, they all sanctioned legally international law, said the Jews could return from their different places throughout the world. Some came from uh, America, you know. They came to Eretz Israel, a small little strip of land there, okay? Much smaller than what it is today as far as territory concerned. Anyway, the Jews came there, penniless and unable to defend themselves. There was no exertion of force. Now, what happened shortly after 1948, and they declared their independence and called the world pretty much by surprise because they didn't ask permission of the U.S. president. They, um, they felt in their hearts, and we waited 2,000 years. We finally had the first opportunity in 2,000 years. If we don't take advantage of this opportunity, we'll never have it again. And that was probably uh, very true that when they declared independence soon after that happened, every Arab nation, including Egypt, declared unilateral war against, um, against I don't know how many Jews were there then, less than 10,000, uh, declared war against them. Not, not because they were in the land, because they were Jews, okay? Exterminating the Jews. They said, oh, we have a collective agreement among the Arab, Arab nations at large to exterminate the Jewish people once and for all. They did not agree with international law. Only then did the Jewish people exert force, but for self-defense. So what I just told you is historical. It's not my opinion, it's based on his history. I think they defeated these Arab nations, their armies and everything, with maybe 5,000 people, 5,000 troops. This is the before the IDF was there, before they had a working army, before they had and air force and tanks and all they just very rudimentary things they had there that was left over from Great Britain. But they were able miraculously to defeat all these us uh, Arab superpowers, including Egypt. And and they'd be able to stand firm in their stance that Am Israel high and never again really ma mattered just meant something to them. So you know the the uh um no, Tere Karta, the Satmar Hasidim, misquoting, horribly misquoting the Midrash and Rashi. He's probably turning over his grave right now. To know that these people actually kissed the, kissed the grave of uh, PLO President Yasser Arafat, you know, not a very good person. But they support Palestinian rights over Jewish rights in the land. And they curse, they curse all the founding fathers who assembled together and sacrificed their lives to form the nation state of Israel. My point is, in the conclusion here, that Israel would not exist to this day if God didn't have a say so in that. Because you could look at the miraculous battles that ensued in 1948. All we told you about 5,000 Jews defeated 10,000 or more Arab soldiers that came in the, the land, the tanks and but and 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 combat machinery and all that it was statistically impossible for them to to survive in fact a lot of presidents of the nations and prime ministers refused to acknowledge israel's existence in the first place because they thought it was a fly-by-night thing and they would not uh, survive within a week but not only did they survive they grew and prospered okay when we all say oh my but when you hear about anti-Zionists, when you hear about anti-Zionists among Jews, 
and you have a pause, and you, and you said, this is confusing. I thought all Jews were Zionists. I thought all Jews celebrated the 70, 73rd anniversary of Israel, which is this evening. I thought all Jews prayed for the Aliyah to Israel. In fact, in my Siddur, in my three prayers, I pray every day when I dive in, it talks about the rebuilding of Jerusalem. It talks about the rebuilding of the temple, the Mishkan, all of this, good stuff. The time of the Mashiach, when Elijah announces Mashiach, Malachi chapter 3, verse 23, I believe. We pray about this, but I think some people are, are misconstrued in that they're praying for Israel of yesteryear, but not the Israel that exists today. I hope that's not true. But I just, this Jew just wants to go on the record here. I'm not saying I hate these deviant sects of Jews that embarrass world Jewry of 12.5 million. They are the minority. They're not the majority opinion. So anti-Zionism comes in abundance from, from fake Palestinians, from a mosque, from the Hezbollah, from the Mullahs in, in Iran, all the radical Islamic extremists you can think of that hate the day that they knew a Jew survived the gas chambers of Hitler's time. When they use the same messaging, they're as bad as that enemy, okay? They're worse than Bernie Sanders and George Soros, they really are. But anyway, I just want to wish everyone a blessed secular holiday. This is a secular holiday. It's not a religious holiday. In fact, there was questions about the color and, and the form of the, of the Israeli flag. Even uh, Rebbe uh, Schneerson, the father of all Chabad, had problems with the national anthem because it was not religious and didn't mention the name of God. Listen, could things have done better? Of course they could, okay? I don't like the government in Israel. It's a socialist um, socialist government there that pretty much puts Arab rights above Jewish rights. There's a lot wrong with Israel, but there's a lot right. Israel has essentially proven itself to not only be able to stand on its own two feet with limited military help from the U.S. and other countries, but also to make themselves a living the DACA box they will go out and help anyone around the world when you have a tsunami, an earthquake, and things like you know, earthquake, earthquake in Haiti, horrible devastation, the tsunami and, uh, that hit Indonesia, all these things, the, the uh, catastrophes, uh, fires out of control in California and the Northwest. The Jews were there, the idea for there, they travel all over the world to help humanity, not just Jews. So this is, what Hashem, this is why Hashem drove the Jews out of Judea in the first place, you know, and, and led them in exile in Babylon because they did not, take, not only did they not take care of the widows and orphans, they didn't care about anyone else. They certainly did not care about taking the Torah out to the world like we read about Jonah and the well. But anyway, God bless you. I hope you have a good holiday. I bought, I went to my favorite grocery store, Shalom Kosher, they have a nice bakery there, and I asked for a cake. People thought it was uh, my daughter's birthday, or my wife's birthday, or something like that. No, it's the birthday of Israel. And we all say, oh man, that, and when my daughter wakes up every night, we're going to all sing uh, Yom Hudalet Someg to Israel. Why not have some fun with this here, okay? Not everything has to be about religion, and by the way, Judaism is not about religion. <laughs> It's about our history, right? We all say, oh man. Tuning out, Yara Ben Emmett. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Remember, um, you cannot judge a book by its cover. You cannot judge this Jew by its cover. A lot of these things were my opinion. I will tell you that and qualify that. But go to my Jewish learning. Look up ultra-Orthodox and anti-Zionist. I don't approve the, the, uh, the uh, unorthodox uh, movie that came out on Netflix. I, I don't approve of that. I think it puts us in them in a horrible light. But anyway, we do so much damage to ourselves about having our enemies do, saying bad, uh, horrible things about, about us, right? We can all do a better job and be a, a better simple Jew. Take care.